important thing. So, so many injuries happen in yoga when people overdo, when they overstretch and we think, oh, I just have to get deeper. I just have to get looser. I have to, you know, have this goal of, of depth in poses. And I invite all of you to just throw that out the window and realize that having a goal to get more flexible is not necessarily the best thing for your body. Um, we want to have functional range of motion that um, serves us in our everyday lives. And sometimes when we get too flexible, um, this is even more challenging to the body than we're not when we're not flexible enough. So when we become hypermobile, especially in our sacroiliac joints and our hip joints, well, any joint really, but particularly for today, um, we can destabilize a lot. And this can cause a lot of pain patterns and a lot of challenges. So I really encourage you as we go fairly deeply into the hip work that you pay very close attention to those um, joints. So the sacroiliac joint, um, you know, the bottom of your spine, your sacrum and your pelvis connects. And that joint, if you look at the articulating surfaces of the sacroiliac joint, you know, where they, they touch each other, it's like Velcro, it's all cratery. It's like the surface of the moon, you know, there's, there's hills and valleys in that. And so when they come together, it's like a Velcro um, connection where those, those um, rougher surfaces prevent you from having this, you know, incredible amount of, of glide. Now, something like your hip joint or your shoulder joint where you have a ball and socket smooth as, um, I like to say, it's like a freshly Zambonied ice, you know, where it's just smooth as butter. So that kind of joint wants to have a lot of slide and glide and mobility, and it's meant for mobility. So we're in a very small area of the body. We're working with two different joints that have a lot, a lot of different functionality. So the sacroiliac joint is a stabilizing joint, and there is some range of motion, but it's not a lot of range of motion. And then the hip joint is a slide glide joint. So we want to gain as much mobility as we can within that joint for our range of motion. So um, oftentimes when we do deep poses, deep hip stretches, like deep pigeon poses or all sorts of other ways that you can stretch your hips, we feel good about the range of motion we're getting in our hip, right? But we can often um, have some instability that arises in that in that tighter joint that we want to hold steady. So there's a ligaments ligaments. Their jobs is to hold a bone to a bone. So there's ligaments all over the sacrum. There's like a fortress of ligaments around the sacrum that hold those two bones in place, and around the hip joint. And even though the hip joint is a very mobile joint, you know we can do all these crazy things with our legs, which is awesome. Um, but there has to be a lot of ligamental stability there too, because we're weight bearing on those joints. You know, it's a primary weight bearing. Those two joints are very weight bearing joints. So when you move, try to be very careful that you are not over overdoing your flexibility. Try to keep one mind on, I'm trying to be stable as much as I'm trying to be free. So how we access that is when we go into depth, we don't fall. So when we fall in poses, when we sink into poses, which is different than yielding, but when we sink into different postures, especially weight bearing postures, um, the ligaments can get really stretched out. And I've described this before, like an old pair of sweatpants that has the elastic has totally gone out and you like can't keep pants up anymore. So we want our ligaments to be like, the brand new mask you just got and put around your ears that has fresh elastic, right? We want that kind of um, stability in our ligaments. So um, try to seek the perfect balance for you. And only you can tell this sensation in the body of being able to open up the muscular body, the, the lymph body, the fluid body, being able to create as much space within that and a range of motion in a healthy way, but also not losing that stabilizing force. So how we get to understanding those sensations in the body that we're looking for that is that balance is just the interoception of really not mindlessly doing these poses. And unfortunately, a lot of times when we're on the floor, we get a little bit less mindful because we're like, oh, I can just I can just relax into this pigeon pose and fall into the earth and sink, right? And so a lot of the poses that tend to be deep um, don't have a, a built-in fortress of strength inherently because you have to hold yourself up um, to stabilize us. So we have to work a little bit more on the mindfulness of maintaining that stability as you move. Um, so just 
let that percolate inside your head today. And if you do have some sacroiliac joint instability, um, be really careful. Uh, anytime you're doing different things with one side of the pelvis than the other, um, you know, we'll, we'll tr I'll try to always come home to a home-based pose to stabilize again, um, but just be very mindful and uh, err on the side of less instead of more if you're not sure um, where you want to be. Okay, so let's sit up and for a moment have such deep gratitude for the way we are designed. Um, we are so perfect in our design. Isn't it marvel a little bit about how even just the subtlety of having the articulating surfaces of a joint space be different from one joint to the other, depending on the need of the joint. The beautiful um, scaffolding and support that we have with our ligament body. The perfect harmony of movement and range of motion when we feel healthy in joints. Let's just marvel and have gratitude for this. All right, so move yourself into your breath. Find what you're finding. Is your breath deep and full today, smooth, even? expansive or is it restricted, tight, bound, choppy, moving only in small places? What can you do to prepare the body for breath to come in? So is the diaphragm free? The muscles that like to take over like your traps, can you soften them and let them take the back seat to the diaphragm? The diaphragm is the driver of the breath. So feel into the belly, feel into the ribs, feel into the breath. Can you ground and yield? This is different than sinking. Can you find that difference? Can you feel the upward growth that's expansive and free instead of a push. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you feel that the breath is spacious, not just in the mobility of the diaphragm, but the mobility of the chest, the ribs? Can you melt and relax your face, softening your eyes? Place your palms together at the heart and bow in. What does um, a healthy range of motion in your body do for you? When you feel stuck and tight in your physical body, what happens? And can just a little bit of awareness, interoception, sensing into the inner body, finding space, finding range of motion, what does that do for your mind? What does it do for your access in the world? So let's offer an intention around healthy range of motion, seeking it, maintaining it, respecting it. All right, and then relax the hands and let's come onto our back. All right, so as you find your way, as we almost always warm up, just first feel yourself on the ground. Do you have a sense of space? Kind of scan through your joints. You can take your legs wide, your arms wide, and maybe start at your crown and just notice your joints along the way and see what freedom you can get. So first your skull bones, your jaw bone. Can you feel your teeth? Go to the base of the skull and 
travel down your spine. No, there's so many joints, right? There's little facet joints on each vertebrae. And then of course, one vertebrae to the next. See if you can just be aware as you breathe and travel down each vertebrae. And even if it's just in your mind, you know, fake it till you make it. So place in the mind and then try to feel that in the body as you travel down each vertebrae. This will be easier when we move in a moment. But just visualize the spine all the way down to the sacrum. Just see what it feels like when you're lying here. Do you have a sense that you're weighted more on one hip than the other? Do you have any tenderness or pain in your back or your hips while you're laying, lying flat? Do you have a sense that your pelvis is hiked up on one side toward your shoulder or tipped over toward the left or right? Can you feel your sit bones? And travel back up, feeling your sternum. Feel the ribs connect into the sternum. And as you breathe, wrap your around your rib cage and feel where your ribs connect to your spine. Traveling up to your shoulder blades, which don't particularly have a joint, but they kind of have a joint. Um, the way they slide on the ribs. So just feel your shoulder blade rib connection. And then travel outward to the ball and socket joints of your shoulders. As you breathe, find the front of your shoulders, that joint where your collarbones touch your shoulder blade. And then travel inward and feel where your collarbones touch your sternum. Sense outward into your elbows, your wrists, and the many joints in your hands. Come back into the center body, travel the spine again. All the way to sacroiliac joints and now find your hip joints. And here we're gonna begin just a little bit of movement. So let's rock. You can bring your legs hip width or a little wider. And let's just internally rotate so you can come toward touching the toes, pigeon toes, and externally rotate. And you know, no, feel your knee joints, feel your ankle joints, sense into all the bones in your feet as your legs are nice and relaxed, going in and out. And just see if you can feel the head of the femur bone in the hip joint. And then stretch a little bit, lengthen your arms up overhead, feel the dynamic nature of this. Maybe your breath suddenly shifted. And then bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit from left and right. And I'll start to sense into the sacroiliac joints again. And then let's circle the knees one direction. And let's circle the knees another direction. A couple times, just notice what this is doing to your SI joints. Can you feel kind of pressure on one side and then pressure on the other? Do they feel the same or uneven? And now let's bring the knees apart from each other and then back in. And they don't have to go in a straight line. They can go in a curvy line. So you might have like little semicircles or full circles or straight lines, whatever feels like a natural movement of your hip joint. So start to pay attention. Obviously we're moving the femur bone in the hip joint. Can you feel this? Do you have um, the same range of motion or no? It's very rare for us to have equal everything in our body, left to right. So you might have, just based on history of how you walk and stand and sit, as well as any injuries you might have had, any traumas you've experienced, can land in the body. So just notice what's happening. And now bring your attention to the sacroiliac joints as well as you continue this movement. You can start to anterior and posterior tilt the pelvis. 
And then we're going to put our feet down onto the ground. Knees are bent, hip width apart with your feet. And we're going to just warm up the low back just a little bit, those multifidi muscles. We're going to scrub the sacrum up toward the shoulders, a little anterior tilt of the pelvis. And then relax and go into a posterior tilt of the pelvis. So you want to feel like your sacrum, when you scrub, you, your sacrum presses down and then pull it up toward your shoulders and then relax and go the other way, a little bit of a rounded spine. And just notice, do you have evenness left and right in the way you engage this? Can you feel the sacroiliac joints? Can you feel the way the pelvis moves? Okay, so remember the, the pelvis is different than the sacrum. It's, it's the pelvis and the sacrum moving together that form that joint. All right, and then let's stretch our arms and legs wide on the floor, extend, wiggle your fingers and toes. Roll your wrists and ankles. Just get some mobility in the edges of your body. And then knees into the chest. Your whole back gets to round now. Inhale, starfish open again. Extend the spine, breathe in. As you exhale, knees up, chin up. Round it. Let's do that one more time. And notice how, you know, really our functional movement patterns involve our low back, our sacrum, and our hips. So, you know, it's very rare to just isolate one of those things. Roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. All right, so let's start moving into some cat-cows. Just that feeling you had of scrubbing the tailbone. See if you can associate that now with the whole spine. That when we lift the tail, and we nutate the sacrum, we can feel the fullness of our whole spine, maybe touch your teeth, and then feel the full rounding, spread your shoulder blades apart. Try to integrate the pelvis and the crown into, you know, feel unified. You are one being, you're not just a segment of parts. Breath is very unifying. Go ahead and move things around any way you want to be. Do you want to sway your hips from side to side? Do you want to pick up your feet and swing them from side to side? Would you rather do some circles with the pelvis? How about your shoulders and your head? Just find any movement that's good for you. And then when we come back into child's pose, anterior tilt, tilt to the pelvis. So lift the sit bones and press the femur bones back and feel the deep compression in the hip joints. So just notice, you know, you, if you have pain, if there's any trouble with the deep flexion in your hips, so find what you're able to find. If you're not able to go into deep flexion of the hips or knees, you can always use some props to help you in this pose. And come back up onto all fours. We're gonna break, bring our right leg straight back behind us. Stabilize through your core. Take a deep breath in and we're just gonna swing. So when you do this, you can swing fast, you can swing slow, you can swing with breath, um, not in line with the breath, but staying in the breathing process. Okay, so you decide, uh, be careful to not scrape your toe, so you don't wanna stub your toe along the way, but just get some movement of flexion and extension. So you decide how deep, how full, how fast, how slow, keep breathing, feel your glutes start to turn on, And then relax and change sides. Bring your left leg out. So remember, you can always come onto fists on the floor or you can put blocks down and put your forearms on blocks if your wrists are unhappy. And then when you're ready, let's start to move. And once again, do you have dominance? You know, do you have a preferred side that works better in your body than the other? Where are your habits? How is your breath? Flexion and extension, just warming up the psoas muscle, the glutes. All right, and then relax that. Now we're gonna come back to the first leg and we're gonna do you know, some big circles. I'll show you from the side. We're gonna bring our leg out and around. I'm, I'm gonna hit my cat if I do that back direction. So I'm gonna go up straight again, but just a big swing with your knee coming out. We're just getting into some range of motion, of flexion, extension, as well as rotation and abduction. And now go the other way. 
Knee comes in toward your chest, out to the side, and then stretch your leg back. This always feels like a one-legged um, breaststroke kick to me a teeny bit. All right, and relax. Shake out your wrists if you need to. Make an adjustment. Let's go to the second side. So we're going to start with a reverse breaststroke. So the leg starts back there, out to the side with your knee, up toward your armpit, and in. And when you do this, make sure you're staying with your breath. Make sure you're staying with your core. So you want to stabilize yourself. So remember, if we can always find stabilization and breath and freedom, our poses are not going to hurt us. If we go somewhere without our breath, if we go somewhere without stability, if we go somewhere without a sense of freedom, we're much more likely to get into thor thorny territory, quicksandy territory. Go the other direction. Hopefully you're getting a little fatigued, warming up the hip joints. All right, go ahead and relax for a moment. Come back into a cat-cow, breathing. And then curl the toes under and lift your way all the way up to dog pose. Spread out through your feet, open up through your hands, give yourself the opportunity to feel the yielding into the earth and then rebound up through to the pelvis. Relax the shoulders. Keep your thigh bones moving up and back. Let's try to nestle the heads of your femur bones into the top back edge of the joint. So lift the femur bones and then send the heads of the femur bones back. Soften your knees as much as you want to. Feel the tip of your tailbone lift. So a little tiny anterior tilt of the pelvis, keep moving your thigh bones back. All right, let's go ahead and walk our feet forward, come into Uttanasana. Fold in half here, relax your spine. Feel free to wiggle, sway, whatever feels good. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, and melt back down. Go ahead and climb up, reaching the arms to the sky, open the chest, and then exhale, and bring your arms down. Shake out your wrists from being on all fours for a bit. Finding the breath. Okay. Feel your grounding. So Tadasana is such a beautiful pose of balance. So let's see what it feels like to have a sense of evenness where we're not leaning into one hip, Leaning into one leg more. Soften the knees and let your body yield and rebound. Feel the spine grow. A sense of support through your core. Can you feel the weight bearing through your SI joints and through your hip joints? Can you feel that sense of loading that happens? Take a deep breath in, arms up to the sky. And exhale and fold forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Grab a block and put it between your thighs, even if you don't need this usually for chair pose. Let's have this block so we can have that sense of using our inner thigh muscles to activate our core, to feel that sense of stability across our pelvis, holding ourselves steady. Draw the knees back into the hip joints now, just like we did in dog pose. Release the femur bones way back and then down. Imagine you have some weights dropping the heads of the femur bones down. Notice if you are living in one leg more than the other. Do you have dominance? Put your arms anywhere you want. Where's the breath best? Feel the integration of your inner thighs helping you feel stable through your pelvis. Helping you activate those deep low core muscles. And then rise all the way up. Keep the block, exhale, place the hands down and step back to dog pose. Find the inter integration of both isometrically pulling your feet apart from each other like you want to tear the mat just a little bit and at the same time a gentle support of the block. So we want to move in two different directions, hugging out and hugging in. Notice the muscles that are activated. See what's happening in your pelvis. Reach through your heart. Stretch through your spine. Come forward into a plank when you're ready. Find these symmetrical poses. They're so wonderful to come back to if you have any challenge with your SI joints. Stabilizing neutral poses like this can be very helpful. Find your breath. 
Imagine you're in her thighs rolling up faster. So if the block was going to go anywhere, it was going to pop up instead of down. Okay, let's come down to the ground. Take that block out of there. Come all the way to the floor. Take your legs, curl your toes under. Lift your kneecaps off the floor so you can take your legs wide on the ground. Feel your toes on the edges of the mat. Take a deep breath in. We're just lifting our lower body here. So the legs lift, straighten your knees. Feel the outer hips. Notice if you have more capacity for strength in one outer glute than near gluteus medius and one side more than the other. Exhale and relax. Melt that back down. Bring your legs into a more neutral position. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale and come back down. This time, arms are going to come back. Legs are wide. Lift everything up. Feel the muscles along your spine. Breathe deeply. Core is engaged. And then relax. Melt toward the floor. Pick up your feet and rock left and right. Let your hips move. And then come back up. Come back to child's pose or onto all fours, whatever works for you. Find your way to dog pose. So no block this time, but can you still isometrically pull your feet apart from each other? And then walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana. Now, you can put the block back in there if you want, but let's see if we can find the same action of pulling the feet away from each other on the mat. So we're trying to like tear the mat just a little bit. Bend your knees as much as you want. Feel the outer hips work. These are deep stabilizing muscles when we are on one leg so that we don't take a lot of brunt into our low back and sacroiliac joints. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine grows, the sit bones are lifting, thigh bones back. On your next exhale, melt back down. Two blocks if you want, left foot back, right foot forward, come into a lunge. So now we're doing oppositional work in our legs. See what that feels like. Can you feel the glutes turn on on both legs? So if you lose your glute on the front leg, press your heel into the floor, extend the spine. When you're ready, rise up, press and lunge. Press the front heel down, extend through the back leg by using your glutes. So this is a good example of where you can just hang. So it's possible to do this pose with like no muscular support. So you can have just a brief moment of feeling that if you want, and then recommit. Feel the glutes on both sides. Engage through your core. Hug that imaginary block again. Find your breath. Yield your feet. Rebound through your spine. Where are your arms? Doesn't matter. Wherever your breath takes you. And then release the hands down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward. Fold in half again. Halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Push off your feet, rise up to stand. Come back to chair pose, no block this time. Feet are together, unless of course you need a block. If your knee's wonky, blocks can help you. We're gonna lift one foot up. So maybe bring your arms out for a little bit more stability. You can always hold on to something if need be. Root your right foot into the ground, over your left foot up. Let this feel those outer hip muscles, your hip flexors, your glutes, your hamstrings, everything's working to stabilize you. Okay, and then place that foot down onto the ground and find the second side. So I'm purposely going into strength first so that you can feel this, what is needed to stabilize in your body. Find the breath. And then two feet down on the ground, inhale, arms up, exhale, fold forward. Left foot is forward, right foot's coming back to a lunge on this side. So even though our legs are doing very different things and we might feel a nice stretch across the hip flexors of the back leg, what's holding you here? Is it just that you're sinking or is there some muscular support? Press the front heel into the ground, feel your glute kick in. Engage your glute on that back leg. It'll help you stretch your thigh, your um, hip flexors more anyway. Find your way up. Once again, easy to collapse. So see what you can let go of and still stay right where you are, 
right? So notice how your joints can hold you when your muscles get lazy. So recommit to your muscles holding your joints for you instead of your ligaments having to do the job. Breathe your way up, breathe your way out, whatever you're doing. Find both glutes, open the heart. Let's go ahead and put your hands down and step back to dog pose. Lift your thigh bones up and back. See what it feels like to have that full length in the body. Maybe your legs are straight, maybe they're not. And then let's walk our feet to the outside edges of your mat and come on up. We're gonna come into a squat. So depending on your hips and your knees and your ankles, you might, you know, lean into one side. You might be like, yeah, my squat's over here because I, I don't like to bend this knee or whatever. So if you have a challenge, go to the challenge first. Find where the challenge can stay healthy and that's where your pose lands. So even if you can go really deep on one side but not on the other side, back away until your most vulnerable joint is happiest. Find whatever squat is available to you. If you can go low enough, elbows on the inside of your knees, spread your toes around, Feel your yielding roots and just enjoy the deep compression in the hip joints. Widen the sit bones. Place your hands down onto the ground and separate your legs. So turn, if you're still on the long edge of your mat, um, turn so that you're facing sideways. So now you're on the long edge of your mat. So come into a symmetrical pose here, legs wide apart. All right, and then we're gonna come on up and out of this pose. Now, I know I've talked about this a lot, but I'll keep talking about it. When we come in, so turn your feet to the right. When we come into externally rotated standing poses like triangle pose, warrior pose, horizontal kanasana, if we try to do that old school mentality of squeezing yourself between two panes of glass, we put so much pressure on our sacred iliac joints. So lose sight of that. Let the back hip turn as much as you need to, and then take the thigh bone back. So feel the head of the femur bone nestle into the back of the joint as much as possible. Soften your knee so you're not hyperextending. Even a teeny bend in that knee can give you the yielding power of moving your foot into the earth. So you can turn this pose toward your front knee. Your torso can turn toward your front knee as much as you need it to be for your pelvis to feel healthy. If you turned a lot, try not to reverse your arms back to the straight line. Let your arms come out directly from your chest. So your Vera 2 may look very different than what you see other people doing, and that's okay. So the work here is to stabilize the pelvis, use both glutes, take the head of the thigh bone back, internally rotate that back thigh a little bit, soften the knee, and feel the head of the femur bone root back. The front leg is stable, rooting. Find your breath. All right, and then let's go ahead and come on up. We're gonna to flip to the other side. The other little hack you can do to make sure that you're treating your hips and your SI joints with respect where your muscles are doing the work instead of your ligaments is to not overbear one side. So if you do more than three standing poses on one side, um, that's you get fatigued and you start working with inefficiency and your ligaments will start trying to hold you instead of your muscles. So ping pong from one side to the other is a great way to keep the muscles refreshed for their job. Okay, so root your front heel into the ground. Feel free to spin that foot a little. The jar lids, I, talk, I say they're jar lids. So the left toes are gonna go left and the left heel is gonna go right, nothing moves. It's just isometrics. And feel this light up your underbelly of your glutes, all those muscles under there. Notice the back hip, do you tend to push it forward? This is a way we hang in our ligaments. Draw the head of the femur bone way back so it's in line. Look to the side and make sure your right, the femur bone in the hip joint is lined up with your ankle bone or is it like five inches forward? Okay, so sense into that internally rotate the thigh and turn your whole pelvis to whatever allows you to have that alignment. Put your arms where your chest, right out from your chest, wherever that is. Drop into your feet, feel the yielding. 
Find your breath. All right, and then let's go ahead and come on up. We're gonna ping pong to the other side for Parsvo Konasana. So same thing, our knee's gonna bend, our hip is gonna bend, but we are placing our elbow down on your knee. So let this top of your back leg settle the femur bone back. Internally rotate your thigh. You might feel like you're sticking your butt way out, but if you look, you're actually aligned with the joint, your hip joint and your ankle joint lined up to each other. Oftentimes we push that hip forward. So try it, push your hip forward. Does that feel familiar? All right, this is one way we lock and lean. So let's unlock, no leaning, stretch the arm wherever you want it to be. Use your muscles to hold you instead of your ligaments. Spread your toes, spread your spine. How's your breath? How's your jar lid on that front foot? All right, and then we're gonna come out of the pose and we're gonna turn the other way. So another little thing you can do if you have trouble with your pelvis in standing poses is take your left foot out to the left more. So you don't have to have heel to arch alignment. That's the quote unquote normal way, you know, like the typical way. But if your hips need a little more support, perhaps take your left foot further out to the left. So now your heel heel or even wider than heel heel. Find your breath. Go ahead and come into the lunge. Stay rooted through your back leg without hyperextending your knee. Internally rotate this thigh and take the femur bone back. Once you're ready, place your elbow down on your knee and open up through your spine. Can you find that alignment where your, your back hip is lined up with your front hip? And it can turn. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be, I guess lining up might, might confuse you. You can turn the hip. You can turn the back hip, the right hip toward the left, okay? But see if you can take the femur bone in the same place, drawing it in back into the back edge of the joint. Open the breath, feel the roots of the feet, how are your shoulders? Do you wanna spin your jar lid with that left foot, toes left, heel right? Are you grounded? Are you yielding and not collapsing? Are you yielding, not sinking? then come back up. Back to some symmetry, heads of the thigh bones back. Press your hands on those thigh bones. Soften your knees so your knees aren't taking the brunt. And then melt your way downward. Relax the spine. Turn back to the front of your mat and come into dog pose. Spine's growing here, get long. All right, and then exhale and come down. Come to lie on your back. Now we're gonna be down doing some work on the floor. So first, just bring your knees to your chest and let your hips relax. You know, standing poses are very dynamic. You're weight bearing, your legs are, you know, moving into external and internal rotation. You're moving into abduction and um, flexion. There's so much happening like that front leg is both Flexing, abducting, and rotating all at once. That's a lot to ask. Okay, so feel free to circle, sway. And then we're gonna put our feet down onto the ground. Two bridge poses, one active, one passive. Heels or feet are hip width apart. Make sure your feet are straight and not turned out. Take a breath. You can always put a block, if you wanna stick a block between your thighs um, to help feel that your inner thighs are a part of the game. That's great. If you need the stability, that's a great way to find it. And just see what it feels like to come into your variation of the pose and hug your sacrum, hug it. Let your muscles give your sacred iliac joints a hug, okay? Don't forget about your inner thighs. Press into the inner feet, the big toes, the inner heels. Find your breath. Can you feel the integration? Left and right working in harmony. All your muscle groups stabilizing the pelvis. All right, 
and then slowly lower your hips down. Feel free to sway or whatever you want to do. And this next variation, we're going to come into bridge pose with the blocks. So to protect your sacred iliac joints, either come on the low height with the whole block across the sacrum. So you want, you don't ever want to have this height, this direction. You want to have this direction under your sacrum. So it can be on the low height, it can be on the middle height, you know, where there's a, a little more height. And if you want a lot of height, don't come up onto the skinny edge of the block. Instead, put two blocks across your sacrum, one on top of the other, so you have height. But this will prevent you, if you, if you have the block across your sacrum, you're supporting the sacrum and a bit of the pelvis. So those sacred iliac joints, if you're on the tiny, small edge of the block, your sacrum is supported, but your pelvis is not. So you have kind of like a, think of like plate techno, tecton, te, tectonics, I think that's the word. You know, you have one plate, the sacrum lifting up with that block and then another plate dropping down, your pelvis is dropping down with gravity. And this puts a lot of stress on your SI joints. So having the block across your sacrum supports this SI joint better, pelvis and sacrum are lifted together. All right, so breathe your way here. Enjoy the symmetry. All right, now one last symmetrical thing we'll do before we go into some deeper hip stretches. Bring your legs up. Now you can bend your knees a lot. Go lower on the block perhaps if you're high. You decide, but the, we're not going to stay here long. The feeling I want you to get is that your femur bones, so interoceptus, feel into it. Your femur bones are dropping with gravity right into the pelvis. Let them root into the pelvis. So it's kind of cool that your sacrum and your femur bones connect to the pelvis. Right? So it's this the pelvis is this beautiful, stable, weight-bearing structure. It's so good when we have a healthy movement pattern of the pelvic joints, the pubic symphysis, the sacroiliac joints, and the hip joints. Can you feel that weight? You might even feel nice on your back. So remember, all this is connected. All right, we're going to bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little traction hug. And then lower the legs down to the floor. Lift your hips and go ahead and rest down onto the ground. Rest in constructive rest for a moment. Just, just feet on the floor. Knees are bent. One more time. Can you root the femur bones? Can you breathe into the pelvis? All right. And let's go ahead and roll over onto our side and come up to pigeon pose. Now, if you have an injury and you know you can't do pigeon pose, um, then you get to do reverse pigeon pose on your back. But if you're able to do pigeon pose, find whatever support you need for this posture. There's many ways of supporting yourself with props. Lately, I've been making a blanket long fold, hot dog fold, so that when I come into the pose, I'm going to take my uh, you bring your left leg forward first, okay? So um, when I come into this pose, both my thigh, my back thigh, and my front sit bone are resting on that blanket. And you may need more height than one blanket. You might need three blankets or whatever you got. The heel can come close to the pubic bone or the heel can pull away from the pubic bone. So find what's working for you, okay? So just adjust until you feel that you have enough support. This is key. If you're hanging in space, you're much more likely to hang in your ligaments and certainly your nervous system will not relax if you're hanging. Lift the back leg, curl your toes under for a moment, lift your kneecap up and slightly inner spiral that thigh. So slight internal rotation and sense that your ankle is right behind your hip joint. You're not bringing your leg out to the side. Widen your sit bones, widen your sit bones Knees, both knees, hug into the pelvis. Extend the spine forward. There's work in this pose. We are not just falling into the earth or into our props. 
Hug the knees toward the pelvis, inner spiral that back leg, sit bones widen, stretch through the front big toe and the inner heel. Pull your pinky toe side of your foot um, up toward your knee. Now that's if your leg is pulled out pretty far. If your heel is tucked right really close to your pubic bone, you don't have to worry so much about that action in the foot. Extend the spine. Where are you feeling stable, both by your own body and the support that's underneath you? You can support underneath your head as well. How's your breath? All right, let's go ahead and come on out of that pose. Swing your leg around, or maybe you like going into dog pose for the other side first. So whatever, however you like to transition, we're going to go to the other side. So no two hips are the same. So you might need more or less support on the other side. You might just have a blanket underneath your sit bone and not under your thigh. You might need nothing at all. Maybe you need three blankets. So um, less is not more. Okay, so less props. You know, try not to think of your props as crutches. They are supports to enable you to be in, in a healthy movement pattern. And it's not a movement pattern. We're staying still when we get here. So it's a healthy stretch pattern. Um, which will enhance our mobility if we do this correctly without overdoing. So as you come into the pose, check in with your joints first. Make sure your hip, your SI joint, and your knee, and your ankle, are, and your low back, are not talking loudly. Okay, so if they're speaking loudly, you need to make an adjustment. They're talking for a reason. They're asking for assistance. Once you're here, before you come down, inner spiral that back leg. Make sure it's straight behind you and you are not um, flailing the leg out. If you tend to lean into your left hip a lot, see what you can do to balance across the pelvis. Widen the sit bones, a little tiny anterior tilt, just a little tiny anterior tilt of the pelvis, and stretch your body forward. So we, if we round our pelvis and we round our spine, we end up kind of um, in a tug of war with the pose. So see what you can do to use the support and also use the hug of the knees into the pelvis so that you can have a little access to move the pelvis around, to widen the sit bone, to have a little anterior tilt. Find some rest here, melt your body. Once you get into a comfortable position of stability, breathe into the stretch, melt into the stretch. Notice if you need to scan the rest of your body and find pockets of tension that are trying to hold you up that have nothing to do with the pose, like your jaw or your traps or your hands or your toes. See if you can keep the pose in a soft place where it can be soft. Discover your breath over and over. There's a big difference between melting and collapsing. Can you feel that difference? Let yourself collapse for a minute so you can feel the difference. So fall, fall into the earth. And then maybe you want that deep of a stretch, but can you stay there and support? Maybe when you fell into the earth, a joint talked to you. Whatever's happening, your ligaments will eventually talk to you. So re-stabilize. All right, and then go ahead and come back up and out of the pose. Sit on your blanket for a moment. Bring your knees to your chest and just bow down. Okay, now this is a big one. So 
Here's a perfect example of not going too far. Okay, so we're going to do Agni Stambhasana, um, fire log. So let's take our left leg on top of our right leg. Okay, actually, let's do the opposite. So we just stretch that side. So bring your um, right leg on top of your left leg. Now, if you come here and you're all discombobulated and it's just not working for you, lean back, put your hands back behind you, undo your bottom leg and put your foot on the floor. So we're kind of in a modified reverse pigeon pose. Um, so you can be here, sit bones are widening, anterior toe to the pelvis, lift the chest, stretch through the big toe and the inner heel. If you are going a little deeper into Agni Stambhasana, first just pick yourself up and move your sit bones back behind you. And then stack your shins, erase your wrinkles in your ankles and stretch through the big toes and inner heels. Find the lift of your spine, slight anterior tilt to the pelvis, just so you're on your sit bones instead of rolling back onto your sacrum. Breathe here. Are, is this safe for your body or no? Is your ego wanting you to go further than your body is capable of? Why? You know, like what's the purpose? Why stretch? What is the purpose of stretching? It's to free us. It's not to bind us to our egos. If you want deeper, press your hands and feet into each other. This will create a little PNF stretch, a proprio-neuromuscular facilitation stretch, which will, you know, um, it, fatigue, it fatigues a little bit of the muscle fibers that tend to bind. So when you release, so release that tension, you might find that you can go a little deeper. Remember, depth is not the goal. Just be where your body is. Are you breathing? Okay, and then go ahead and come out of there. Straighten your legs for a minute. Shake your knees. Make sure your knees are happy. Knees, knees are, you know, hips are a fortress of ligaments. Knees are smaller ligaments that break, right? Everyone knows about ACLs and things like that. So when we come into the second side, be really mindful that you're not overbearing your knee joints. So one of the ways you can protect your knees when you're in deep rotation of your hip like this is to stretch through the big toe and the inner heel and pull back from the pinky toe side of your foot toward the outer knee. This will align the tibia and the fibula well so that you're not overstressing the ligaments in your knee. If something needs to change, you lean back, you put that foot on the ground and come into a reverse pigeon pose modified. We're still stretching through the big toe and the inner heel. If you want deeper, first before you, you know, make sure you're taking your sit bones back. And once you're there, if you want to go deeper, press hands into the soles of the feet and soles of the feet into the hands, about 25% of your work load, press, breathe and then release that and see where it takes you. Do you have a little bit more capacity? Remember our goal is not depth. Our goal is to just be in the spaciousness and stability of the joint movement. All right, let's go out of there Okay, bring your knees to your chest and just relax for a moment. If you want, we can come into some rocking plow. So you can kind of come onto your back and rock a little bit. Just feel some ease. Be mindful of furniture. All right. And now, when you stretch your legs straight for a moment, we're almost to Shavasana. We just have a twist to go, but just feel first legs straight and do the same as what we began with. Toes in, toes out. Just feel some easy, loose range of motion. And you can kind of rock this quickly. You can move it slowly. Just let the burden of um, the, the hips, the work of the hips that we've been doing release. Let your knees release. and then put your feet on the ground, lift your hips, scooch them to the right a couple of inches, knees come up and drop them left and just find a twist in the body. I don't think we've done a single twist yet today. So just enjoy the twisting body, the way the breath feels upon a twist.
And inhale and lift your knees up, scooch them to the left, your hips to the left, knees up, drop them right, and take the twist on this side. Even the twist, can you notice, does it feel different one side than the other? Are you more comfortable twisting in one direction? Discover your breath. Go ahead and relax. If you want some support for your knees for Shavasana, try taking two blocks with their short edges touching. So you have a nice long prop to put underneath your knees and then a blanket over top those blocks. Of course, if you have a bolster, you can use that or you can put your legs up on the couch or a chair. And of course you can ignore me and just go on flat on the ground. Okay, so that it might feel nice have some support underneath the knees to let the hips relax, to let the sacrum relax in this posture. You might even want to put your legs up the wall. So just see what your body's asking for. Trust yourself. Listen to what the body's asking for and respond. Come into the breath as you find your way into the floor. Concentrate on melting your thighs. Can you feel that sense that the hip joints, the knee joints, everything is deeply restful and spacious. Maybe even the breath can come all the way down to the pelvis. Melt your shoulders, melt your head, soften your face. You did a lot of work in your hips. That was a lot of work. So melt and rest. Let yourself integrate your postures.
Let's begin to deepen our breathing again. Come into the melt. Let your whole body drop into the earth. Find how it feels to breathe into your pelvis. Eventually, find some movement, wiggling your toes or fingers, maybe turning your head from side to side. Perhaps you like bigger movements. Allow yourself to eventually roll over onto your side into a little ball, feel the softness there. And then eventually come up to sit. Sit on a prop so that your hips are as high as your knees or higher. Let's just take a moment to offer our practice, share your energy, send forth your love, your care. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.